Hi, I'm Jeffrey Holbrook and I'm the Associate Principal Trumpet here in the Seoul Philharmonic. I'd like to walk you through three of the most commonly asked orchestra excerpts for trumpet auditions. Promenade from Pictures at an Exhibition, the opening of Mahler's Fifth Symphony, and the offstage solo from Pines of Rome. Although each of the three pieces are different styles and require different skills to play, the common problems that I've seen in these excerpts and auditions all have to do with the most basic fundamentals of playing the trumpet. Sound quality, intonation, rhythm, and tempo. I will show you what the most common mistakes I've heard on these pieces are and show you how I practice these major pieces. Pictures at an Exhibition has the distinction of being the most commonly asked excerpt for trumpet auditions. On top of that, it very well could be the first notes you play for the audition panel. The reason it is commonly the first piece asked is that it highlights so many of the basic skills needed to do the job well without being overly technically difficult. The opening of pictures can easily sort out those players who should be considered real contenders for the position from those who will not be considered in quick manner. Let me play it for you. The first thing to remember is that Mussorgsky did not originally write the piece for symphony orchestra. The edition most people think of was actually orchestrated by Maurice Ravel, but the original composition was written for solo piano. So in that in mind, I always try to match my articulation to how a piano plays this passage, like so. As you can hear, there's a strong, even attack across each note with the natural decay and evenness across all registers. I prefer to maintain that style throughout the entire excerpt. Sometimes when I hear people attempt to play with strong articulation, they also tend to add some separation between the notes, but I strongly suggest against that style. To me, it takes away the momentum of the line and tends to sound too weak or thin. An exercise I do to make sure I'm not adding any unwanted separation between the notes is to practice the entire opening slurred. Once you return to playing the music as written, retain that same feeling of your air that you had when slurring the passage. The next pitfall I often hear at auditions is from the eighth notes that come up in the first measure. More often than not, they tend to rush, which then causes the musician to quicken the tempo throughout the excerpt. Maintaining a steady tempo is crucial to having success in pictures. So in order to address this issue and get the correct timing ingrained in your playing, I like to play the entire opening in straight eighth notes, subdividing like so. Practicing subdivision makes it nearly impossible to rush on these passages as you will naturally start to subdivide in your head as you play the original version. The next issue that often arises is taking too much time to breathe between phrases. Now in truth, some conductors in an orchestral setting may ask for a little bit of space at the end of the second measure when the trumpet solo passes the line to the full brass section. But in an audition situation, you must keep the tempo going. 
It's not uncommon to see a member of the jury behind a curtain lightly tapping a pencil to the beat to test whether the auditioner is maintaining the tempo from start to finish. And taking extra time to breathe will not be received well by some on the jury. The hardest section for maintaining good intonation are the two one octave jumps. First from the F to the F and then from the A flat to the A flat in the last four measures of the solo. Outside of just getting in the habit of using a tuner in my practicing to ensure my pitch remains stable, the best exercise I've found to keep my pitch steady is to practice the passage like this. Practicing the flow on unison notes and then back to back playing the octaves has proven to be an effective tool in my own practice. One last point that needs to be addressed is balance. It's important to remember that each note on the trumpet does not respond at equal volumes using the same amount of air. So just as you give your upper register more air as you play high notes, you must do the same for low notes. If you don't, certain notes will get overshadowed by the louder notes around them. As you hear, the lower notes are overshadowed by the higher notes, so you must give them more air so that they sound the same volume. When recording yourself on this excerpt, really listen for consistency of your sound quality that you maintain a steady tempo, good rhythm, good pitch, and an evenness across all registers. The opening solo to Mahler 5 is one of the most iconic moments for the trumpet in the orchestra. Although it has a very different sound and feel from the opening of pictures at an exhibition, the same elements of sound quality, pitch, rhythm, and steady tempo are in the spotlight. In order to play the opening triplets condensed, as is the regular practice of the piece, but maintain a steady tempo, I like to think of the opening in 6-4 time. So what I do is think about the tempo I want for the middle of the excerpt. Establish that tempo in my head, and then count two full bars of that tempo in 6-4 in my head before starting the excerpt. I found that if you just start the excerpt cold, you're either going to find yourself having an inconsistent tempo, or you'll land on a tempo that you may really not have wanted. The tier dynamics of the opening phrases need to be organized as we need to consistently be building energy and tension from the opening triplet until the final arpeggio going into measure seven. In the first four measure phrase, I want you to make sure that you get lots of decay in each of the long notes. We don't want to have to play too soft where we don't feel comfortable and can't play with a beautiful sound. So in order to not add too much energy to the music too quickly, there must be a sizable diminuendo to each long note. In the second phrase, as we are building towards the climax, each of the long notes can get longer and longer. It takes a little planning, but you need to find ways to add and subtract energy from the music without the dynamics being the only tool you use. The phrase starts out piano and ends with only one forte, but there needs to be a lot of nuance within these two phrases. So vary your note length, your style of articulation, and your vibrato in order to help you achieve this tiered effect. As the excerpt goes on, I've often heard players drastically change the tempos from one section to another. 
Usually, in an attempt to build drama and make the rhythm stand out more, the phrases beginning in measures 9 and 15 have a tendency to drag. So once you've established your tempo at the beginning, stick with it and make sure you work your phrasing and style around that tempo. As you approach the most dramatic lines of the excerpt, you want to make sure that your energy builds and builds. So in order to achieve this, you want to make sure that your note lengths remain as long as possible without sacrificing the sharpness of your attacks. So often do I hear players equate sharp articulations with separated notes. Something like this. But those factors work against each other in the goal of building drama and power. So it should be more like this. At the same time, make sure that as you add note length, you don't water down the attack or the rhythm. It needs to be as sharp and exact as it was when you were adding separation to the notes. It will require that you take big breaths and use lots of air, but the result you will get will be very moving for the listeners. Towards the end of the excerpt, as you play your final three triplet figures in rehearsal one, note that the entire rest of the orchestra lands on a quarter note as the solo trumpet plays half notes. You must highlight this so that it doesn't look like an error in your score, so play these half notes at full value without much decay. The Pines of Rome offstage solo is often the excerpt a panel will choose to highlight a player's lyrical style. The difficult part is to be able to maintain all the other fundamental skills as we concentrate our energy on playing as beautifully as possible. By far, the biggest issue I've heard on this excerpt is with tempo. I found that as players concentrate so much on playing with a nice lyrical sound, that sometimes they pay zero attention to their tempo. This is especially true in the long notes. It is very typical for players in auditions to cut the long notes off by a full beat or sometimes more. If you were to do this in a performance, you would have the conductor and the strings who accompany the solo totally out of sync, taking away the beauty of the moment. The thing is, many players have no idea that their tempo is so far off. When I've recorded my students, prompting them to only play the solo as beautifully as they possibly can, they were shocked when they heard how little attention they paid to the tempo. The good thing is that it's a very easy fix. Even just being told to be aware of it is enough to fix the issue for most players. Before I play this excerpt, I always make sure to count one, two, three, four, five, six, go. Oh. This helps me really feel the pulse inside as I'm playing. And once you've gotten used to playing with the correct tempo and feeling the pulse, then you can turn your full attention to the sound and phrasing without issue. The biggest issues with pitch usually begin with the arpeggio as you go up to the high G in the second phrase. If a player is thinking up, up, up as they approach the high note, especially when high G tends to be very sharp on most instruments, the pitch can start to scream sharp. So instead of thinking up to the high G, I like to visualize going down on the arpeggio. 
This helps not only keep the pitch under control, but it also keeps my sound round and open. Rhythmically, there are two issues that I regularly see. The first is the pacing of the triplets in the first phrase. These triplets are often rushed and result in speeding the tempo up. As long as you feel the pulse on the quarter note beat, make sure to spread the triplet out evenly over that slow beat. As an exercise, practice singing your triplets while keeping the beat on your chest. The last issue I've seen is people adding extra time whenever they breathe. Although this is the solo trumpet's moment, if you add too much time within these breaths, the onstage strings who accompany the solo will again be vulnerable to getting off track. Regularly practice the excerpt with the metronome to test not only when you tend to want to speed up or slow down, but also to make sure you're not adding time to the end of each phrase. When working on the excerpts you expect to play on an audition, it is natural to put the focus on the part of the excerpt that makes it difficult. This could be range, the dynamics, or the tempo, but we must always remember that we must build the excerpt up from the bottom up. This means that the fundamentals of sound quality, good pitch, good rhythm, and tempo must be maintained and focused on from the first time you start to work on a new excerpt. Although we worked our way through only three of the common excerpts, many of the same techniques and practice strategies can be applied to other pieces you'll have to prepare. The key tools to getting fair and unbiased feedback on your playing is to record yourself, playing for other musicians to receive feedback, and using a metronome and tuner regularly in your practice. As I've mentioned before, the music will oftentimes feel different to us as we're playing than it sounds to an outside audience. We need to make sure that we have the ability to be aware of the differences between a passage that feels good and one that sounds correct to an outside observer. So best of luck to you as you prepare for your next audition. Thank you.